Welcome back for another Shogun review. Episode three, Tomorrow is Tomorrow. Another really good episode where we're starting to really see some relationships form, including uh, Toranaga and Blackthorn themselves. Uh, the main characters, obviously, and uh, Mariko as well with Blackthorn has a few pretty good scenes to establish their relationship and get it kind of moving along. So we open up here with Yabushige as he writes a will. He seems to be ready to die, or expecting to die at least, as he goes to see Toranaga. And of course, through his spies, apparently he does know that Ishido had came to see him. So he knows he's kind of playing both sides of the fence, but ultimately he has been loyal since he did bring Blackthorn back to him, as opposed to taking him to uh, Ishido and letting him die. Ultimately wants him to take Blackthorn and his wife back to his village in Ajiro, which is where the ship uh, crashed in the first place. And then we get the wonderful intro, of course, that we saw last week uh, in episode two as well. But then we open up with Ferriera, the captain of the black ship, and he says he's going to leave regardless of what Toranaga says, since the Portuguese are kind of in with the other members of the council, specifically the Christian ones. We also get some information that the assassin last week was a member of the Amida, when Mariko is telling Blackthorn as he gets his wound treated, and basically tells him that she had been a member of the household servants for a long time, but they could wait years for an assassination or train for just one kill, and apparently that was it. And then we see Mariko's husband come in, and he's just a dick at this point, but they're really playing that up because of the scene later in the episode when he tried to escape Osaka as he stays behind and actually allows them to escape to the ship. So the way they wrote that, the where you thought he was just a dick and he was jealous or whatever it is, which, you know, he kind of was to some degree. The reason they wrote it that way is because it paid off so well when they did the scene where he stood back and actually allowed them to escape and he gave up his own life, fighting essentially all of Asaka once they were alerted that they were leaving and Toronaga was actually with them. So a lot of respect goes to Buntaro and that's why that scene worked so damn well because he had been played up as such a dick in the previous scenes that he was in. We find out a little bit more backstory on Fuji and her father fought in Korea as uh, Hirimatsu talks to her as well. So we're getting a lot more backstory on these characters as we kind of move into the mid-season here. And then they do prepare to leave to head back to Ajiro. And then of course Ishido shows up and has to inspect the cargo. And one thing I wanted to mention here is I didn't really understand why he allowed Blackthorn to leave in the first place. He saw him standing there going to leave and he is a guest of Toranaga, but he actually was thrown in prison and had a death execution ordered by him in his council. So I'm not sure why he was going to let him leave anyway, but he did. He didn't really say anything to him or about him. But of course, Toranaga and his brilliance creates a diversion by having the girl who is pregnant actually kind of pretend to have labor pains or whatever as he kind of slips in and switches places with his wife and I guess leaves her behind to uh, come home later I suppose but he wanted to get the hell up out of there he knows he's going to be killed if he doesn't we then have a little quick scene of uh, Yabushige telling Ishido's right hand man that he will keep his promises but again he doesn't so again he's kind of playing both sides to save his own life but he had told uh, Torinaga exactly what he wanted as far as uh, increasing his fief and lands and all that good stuff as well. But he is really loyal to him, it seems. So he seems to only be appearing to play both sides of the fence, really loyal to Torinaga. And honestly, if it wasn't for Yabushige, he would probably already be dead. And of course, as they're about to leave, uh, they have another inspection. It was apparently ordered by Ishido, as he probably suspected something. But Blackthorn himself actually risks his own life and creates another distraction as to prevent the guy from seeing Toranaga himself. And I really think that plays a big part in the ending that we'll talk about in just a few minutes as far as the respect between these two. Then we see Mariko and Blackthorn talking again as they get a little closer during the walk through the woods as they kind of develop their relationship as we can kind of see what's coming there. And of course, as we expected, they were ambushed by Kiyama's men and because they want him dead so bad as far as the Catholics or Portuguese. And he's essentially working for them. So his men ambushed the whole clan and they find out Toranaga is there and Asaka is alerted. Ishido finds out and comes out later as well. And of course, this is the scene where Buntaro stays and defends them and holds them off as they get to the ships. Really outstanding scene there, a lot of respect, and you saw Toranaga stand up and actually salute him in a sense, and you know, knowing that he's going to give up his own life to save his lord. So again, all that writing they had, all those little moments where you thought, this guy's kind of a dick, he's just, what is he jealous for, why is he mad all the time? It was all really to help this scene really land a lot harder, and it definitely worked, so kudos to the writers for that. But then, of course, they do make it to the ship, but we see a little blockade of the Christian samurai. Again, this is Kiyama's men as well. They are opposing as fishermen, but of course, uh, Blackthorn notices, you know, do you fish at night here? And of course, they recognize them immediately. So they decide to make another great move and stay up by the black ship that's going to leave anyway. So Toranaga does treat with the captain as well as Del Aqua, and uh, Suji is there as well, and offers up a church in Edo, and a lot of silver profit as well from the silk trade. Essentially, if they'll get him the hell out of Osaka, 
and kind of help him against uh, Kiyamo and Ono as far as their Christian allegiances uh, working with Ishido as well. So he kind of cuts the deal and they all seem to agree to it, but they do want to keep Blackthorn there because they know that everybody wants him dead and they want him dead as well because he's not helping the Portuguese whatsoever. So Alvito or Suji uh, shows Toronaga Blackthorn's book, proving that he's a pirate, and it seems that Toronaga agrees to this. Mariko tells him that he must stay, but he decides to be himself, of course, and pilot the ship that he's on with the crew that they left behind and essentially erase the black ship out of the bay. And if you're wondering how he knew this crew that he seemed so personal with, this was the actual crew he sailed into Osaka with, and he really essentially saved their lives during that storm. So they are uh, now familiar with each other. They even called him Anjin, uh, seemed happy to see him. So they're the crew that he was left behind with. And of course they sail up out of there and run up beside them as Rodriguez is piloting the black ship. But Rodriguez kind of repays the favor of saving his life and does not run him into the rocks. So both ships do escape Osaka and then later on they rejoin Blackthorn on his ship as well and lets the black ship go about its business. Then we jump over to a council meeting where they're arguing about what happened the night before. And Hiromatsu comes in and tells them that Toronaga resigns from the council officially and reminds them that they actually need five votes for anything and this is per the Taiko. Then we get another Mariko and Blackthorn conversation. They're getting closer and closer as this episode progresses. And he tells her a little bit about his family, that he's never met his daughter. He left before that, before she was born, and apologizes for her husband as he's really starting to gain respect for the culture here. They did show him several times during that scene where he's watching him essentially give up his own life to let them escape. So it seems to be that he's really gaining a lot of appreciation for the culture. And of course, he's learning some Japanese as well. And then due to his bravery and for offering up, I think previously, the distraction that actually saved Toronaga's life in the first place, Toronaga actually offers Blackthorn a regiment to train in his Western ways as far as his weapons and all that as well. And actually makes him a Hatamoto. Now, Hatamoto in Japanese actually means guardian of the banner. And this is a real life thing that Tokugawa Shogunate had. This is a very high-ranking samurai under the Tokugawa, or in this case, the Toronaga regime. So he is now an official vassal of Toronaga and a high-ranking one at that. So a lot of respect now between these two men, these two main characters. And we also see that in the final scene. We get the title from the episode, Tomorrow's Tomorrow, as he has Blackthorn teach him how to dive. So he has Blackthorn dive about 87 different times. And then Toronaga finally decides to try it himself and offers to race him to the shore as we see Mariko smiling as they swim off to the shore. And that's how the episode ends there with a lot of respect, a new title, and they no longer have to call him Blackthorn. Barbarian. So anyway guys, another great episode in the books. We have seven more for this uh, series here, and I think it is a limited time series as far as uh, covering the whole entire book, so I don't think they'll have a season two, but really, really good so far. You know, some of the best TV I've seen in a long, long time. So anyway, thank you to all you new subscribers out there. I really appreciate you guys checking out the last couple of videos. As usual, thank you to channel members and Patreon members as well. You guys keep this channel going. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.